All right, in the last video, we talked about the first of our two special right triangles, specifically the 45-45-90 triangle. And we saw in that instance that the 45-45-90 triangle is produced by dividing a square in half on one of its diagonals. Today, we're going to be looking at the other type of special right triangle, which comes from an equilateral triangle. Now, with an equilateral triangle, we know that the sides are all congruent. So if we consider each of these sides, as being a length x. We also know that a special or that an equilateral triangle has three congruent angles and that each of those angles measures 60 degrees. Now with the case of the square for the 45 45 90 triangle we were able to divide the triangle in or the square in half using one of its diagonals. In this case, a triangle, the equilateral triangle, doesn't have any diagonals, but we can still effectively divide it in half by drawing one altitude. Now remember, an altitude, and I'm going to use these, this uppermost vertex to do that, is any segment from a vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. Something like so and that it's going to intersect the opposite side at a right angle. So let's consider for a moment, let's give ourselves some names, we'll call that vertex A. ABC is our original triangle and we'll refer to this point here where the altitude meets segment BC, we'll call that D. Now we know that in an equilateral triangle, whenever you draw in one of its heights, that it's going to divide that opposite side, segment BC, into two congruent parts. So in this case, if we consider that these two segments, BD and DC, have to be congruent and they have to total X, whatever that measurement is, then we can reason that each of these must be half of X. Now, some will write that as one half X, others will write it as X over two. And it's ultimately just whichever form you're more comfortable with as to which one you want to use. We know they have the same meaning. Now with that in mind, let's kind of talk about where the special right triangle comes into play. The special right triangle here is going to be, and we're going to talk about this rightmost half, triangle ADC. Now in that triangle, let's talk about the angles in that triangle. We have a right angle. We have a 60 degree angle that came from the fact that originally it was an equilateral, which means this angle up here, angle DAC, has to have a measure of 30 degrees. And we get that from the triangle sum theorem. The fact that the three angle measures in any triangle have to total 180 degrees. And that creates, if we consider triangle ADC, what's called the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now the 30, 60, 90 triangle has different relationships in its side lengths than the 45, 45, 90 does that we talked about in the last video. We've already determined here that the angles in the triangle, first of all, none of them are equivalent to each other. They don't have the same angle measures as the 45, 45, 90 did. So let's consider what's actually going on here give ourselves a smaller triangle to look at, and I'm going to draw it in a different orientation. But I'm not measuring anything, but we're going to assume that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, so I'm going to say that this angle over here is my 30 degree measurement. Here's our right angle, and this would be then our 60 degree angle. Now what we've determined from this diagram up here at the top is that the side opposite the right angle we labeled with an X and the side opposite the 30 degree angle was one half X. So opposite the 30 is one half X. The question then becomes, well, what's the length of this other leg in terms of X? And that's where your Pythagorean theorem is going to come into play. Okay, so here again, this was our point C, this was our point A, and this was D from our original diagram up here at the top. Okay, so what we know in this case, the length of the leg squared plus the length of the leg squared has to be the length of the hypotenuse squared. 
So the length of segment AD squared plus the length of segment CD, one half X squared, has to be equal to the length of the hypotenuse X squared. Okay, so let's multiply this out. AD squared is going to stay the way it is. When we square one half, when we multiply one half times one half, we get one fourth. X times itself, or X squared. And over here on the right, it's going to be equal to X squared. Okay, next thing we want to do, we want to get all of those X squared terms on one side of the equation. Remember, we're trying to find the length of segment AD. So that's the part that we want to isolate. So here I want to subtract 1 fourth X squared from both sides. Now let's consider what happens here. If I take X squared and I subtract 1 fourth X squared, remember there's an understood coefficient of one here. And that one I want to think of as being 4 fourths. So when I take 4 fourths X squared and subtract 1 fourth X squared, it produces 3 fourths x squared. Now to get AD by itself means taking the square root of both sides. So the square root here and there. Okay, so on the left side, the square root of AD squared becomes simply AD. Now simplifying the right side requires us to think a bit more. Whenever it comes to simplifying the square root of a fraction. Consider it as the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. So if I consider the square root of three over the square root of four, I know the square root of three doesn't, can't, doesn't simplify, but the square root of four does, it becomes a whole number two. We also have the square root of this x squared, which simply becomes x. So what we've determined here is the length of segment AD is the square root of 3 over 2 times X. Now, in the last video, when we talked about 45, 45, 90 triangles, we looked at the various ways that those can be written in terms of ratios or in terms of equations. The similar type of discussion can happen here. In this case, if we consider the lengths of the sides, we usually consider the length of the side opposite the 30 degree angle first, the side opposite the 60 degree angle second, and the side opposite the 90 degree angle last. So in this case, the side opposite the 30 would be 1 half X, or X over 2 if you prefer it in that form. The side opposite the 60, which is the square root of 3 over 2 times x. And then the side opposite the 90, which is simply x. So we could go in those terms using a variable. Keep in mind that I'm using x, but any variable could be used. Okay, then we go the route of, that's one possibility for how I can understand this ratio. Another is to say, what if I let x, the length of that hypotenuse, which was originally the length of one of the sides of the equilateral triangle, what if we let that be one? So if x equals one, then consider what these ratios would look like. Half of one would simply be one half. Where x is one, this becomes the square root of three over two. And where x is 1, we simply have 1. So 1 half root 3 over 2, or root 3 over 2, 1. Let's consider a different form. What if x equals 2? Well, half of 2 becomes 1. Here, when you multiply the square root of 3 over 2 times 2, these 2's are going to cancel, leaving our square root of 3. And then in our last case, when x is 2, we get this form. Now, when it comes to textbooks and other videos, you may see this form. And typically, you'll see this form. 1 root 3, 2. You can also look at these in terms of equations. So if we consider this is what we call the hypotenuse. 
Now we know these other two sides are referred to as legs. To distinguish between the two, we know that the side opposite the 30 has to be shorter than the side opposite the 60. Remember the shorter leg is opposite the smaller angle. So we could refer to this as the shorter leg and this one as the longer leg. And if we do that, then we can start talking about it less in terms of algebra and more less in terms of ratios is what I meant to say and more in terms of just algebraic equations. So here there's a relationship. We know that the short leg is half of the length of the hypotenuse. If we consider the longer leg, there again it's being multiplied by the length of the hypotenuse. The longer leg is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 times the length of the hypotenuse. So as I mentioned in the last video, there are various ways that you can approach problems of these types. Sometimes it's going to be simple to set them up in proportion or ratio form using these ratios that we have. Sometimes it'll be simpler to work with it in terms of an equation but it's largely just a matter of choice and comfort as to which one you use. They're all variations on the same concept. So that completes our introduction to the special right triangles, where they come from. One is half of a square using the diagonal in the square. That one we refer to as the 45, 45, 90. And then in this case, we get the 30, 60, 90 triangle, which is produced by drawing one altitude in an equilateral triangle. In the next couple of videos, we're going to be looking at how we use these ratios and relationships, these equations, in determining missing side lengths in 45, 45, 90 and 30, 60, 90 triangles.